Lab Notes, week ending March 31st, 2023. The Camellia sinensis experimentation continues. Well, I say experimentation, but I really mean recording great germination. When we left off, the sinensis seeds were soaking in water for 24 hours. For each group, the water was decanted and the seed surface dried with a paper towel. Then they were weighed individually and the data was recorded. On average, these seeds gained about 2.5% weight in water. That seems to be low, indicating the seeds were well preserved by the vendor. After that, the seeds were placed on filter paper in 90mm petri dishes. Some of the seeds are larger than 12mm, making the lids sort of cattywampus. Tall dishes would have been more appropriate. The dishes were transferred to the grow tent for no reason other than to clear space on my lab bench. The conditions in that grow tent are not all that different from my bench, except perhaps more light. Every day I check to see what seeds have cracked, indicating germination. Those seeds are removed and buried 2-3 to three centimeters deep in peat perlite potting mix, labeled and then irrigated. The tray inserts are put back in the grow tent along with the remaining ungerminated seeds in their dishes. So far, the germination rate is excellent. I just have to say that it is so refreshing to buy from a good vendor who has good products. This week, I finally received my order of dried Picrolima nitida, also known as Akawama seeds. Here I am removing the outer skin, easy enough with one hand. As with Camellia sinensis, the seeds were individually numbered and weighed. I suspect that nitida is recalcitrant and will not germinate after desiccation and storage. However, I have yet to locate a source of cuttings or seedlings of nitida in the U.S. The dried seeds and seed-based products are a rare but available commodity domestically, so this is worth a test. My order of 200 grams contains around 300 seeds. I would consider even a few germinations out of the entire bag to be a success. I can propagate the resulting plants by vegetative cuttings from there. Likewise, the scientific literature is sparse. I have found only two papers on nitida germination, and both use fresh seeds. So I decided, somewhat arbitrarily, to do a couple of exploratory pretreatments. These were selected to A, get an idea of the contamination load, and B, to see if any treatment might be an avenue to investigate with larger trials. The three groups I selected are 1. Five seeds placed straight into a petri dish. This is the control group. 2. 10 seeds given a 24-hour soak in distilled water. And 3. 10 seeds given a 24-hour soak in 100 parts per million gibberellic acid solution. In total, 25 seeds were started. All three groups were incubated at 30 degrees Celsius for the duration of the experiments. After 24 hours, the two pre-soaked groups gained about twice the weight as the non-soaked group. However, there was this one seed, number two, which gained a whopping 29% in the petri dish group. The others only gained around 4-7%. to Perhaps that was an error, or this seed is just really thirsty. So, those groups are incubating in petri dishes right now. We will see how it goes. Moving on to Dermatophyllum secundiflora, aka the Texas Mountain Laurel. I'm just on a string of giant seeds lately. Well, not really. I'm just showing these up front because tiny seeds are boring. So Secundiflora has a really hard seed coat once dry. A scalpel can't make a dent. You could soak them in water for years and they won't germinate. Just in case, I tried a 24 hour soak in distilled water. They gained an average of half a milligram in response. This was probably just extra water I didn't remove with the paper towel or random error. So yeah, that's going nowhere. Some preliminary research suggests that acid and physical scarification are possible methods of triggering germination, so I decided to try both. Seeds 1, 2, 5, and 6 were immersed in 93% sulfuric acid, drain cleaner, for 30 minutes. Then the seeds were rinsed three times with distilled water. Interestingly, the seeds lost their shine and took on a more matte finish. Seeds 3 and 4 were rubbed against 120 grit sandpaper until a light color showed through. This took longer than I expected. Those seeds are really hard. Then all of the seeds were immersed in distilled water and placed in the incubator. After 24 hours, the two sanded seeds had roughly doubled their mass. The acid scarified seeds, in contrast, had only absorbed an additional 1% of their respective masses. The water was also discolored after seemingly leaching 
some of the seed's pigment. This pigment could, hypothetically, be some sort of chemical inhibitor of germination. So I decanted the tube and refilled it with more distilled water. I think the plan is to continue the imbibition until the seed's masses have stabilized, indicating maximal absorption before transferring them to petri dishes. It's not all fun in games with the analytical balance around here. Science is messy and tedious. Every day I check on all of the various plants and experiments, watering things that need watering, moving plants around that need better lighting or shielding from the great munching cat, Peeber. Surfaces need to be cleaned frequently. I don't trust new plants and neither should you. So after I have transplanted newly arrived plants into better pots, I wipe down surfaces and utensils with 10% bleach to minimize the risk of pest transmission. Labware also needs to be cleaned. All of the beakers, dishes, tubes, flasks, etc. need to be hand washed. I need an intern or something. And then there's the media prep. Measuring out proportions, mixing, pasteurizing, adding fertilizer, more mixing, and pulling out small branches because I use cheap peat moss. Media and supply recycling isn't any more fun. Trays and inserts definitely need to be cleaned thoroughly and bleached to mitigate pest transmission. I even wash the brand new stuff because I'm paranoid. Tags can also be recycled. Then there are the petri dish inserts. I've been cutting them out by hand, which probably isn't worth it, but I'm still doing it. Oh, and all of these pictures and videos of various tasks need to be organized into their respective folders for later. I have accumulated a little over 8,000 pieces of media totaling 144 gigabytes. So yeah, a lot of tedious tasks behind the scenes. Anyway, back to the fun stuff. I received several live plants this week, a Piper Aretum, Boa Conga Africana, and a couple of Ilex Paraguariensis. Each one needs to be extracted delicately from whatever unholy amalgamation of plastic bag and strangulating packaging tape the vendor decides to use. The plants are thoroughly inspected for pests, damage, and disease. Baseline photos are taken. The plants are potted in an appropriately sized container and irrigated thoroughly. Unfortunately, I haven't had the time to research media specifics for these plants and have thus defaulted to standard peat perlite potting mix. If you have the space, I strongly recommend quarantining new plants for at least a week, if not two or three. I don't have room at the moment because of all of the spring plant starts. I'll just have to keep a close eye on the new stuff. Not that that is a chore. I often catch myself surveying my plant domain like Alexander over Macedonia. In seed news, I also received some Erica catechu. These seeds were sent to me in moist vermiculite to keep them from drying out. That media was rinsed off. Each seed was numbered and weighed though I don't plan on weighing them again for a while. Initial research suggests catechu seeds can take months to germinate. I went ahead and planted them in sterile, moist sand for now. Oh, and I did not remove the fibrous husk on the seeds. I did the same thing with Polinia capana, aka guarana seeds, rinsed the transport material off, placed them in moist, sterile sand, and put them in the incubator at 30 degrees Celsius. Then it was just planting seeds in flats. Planting seeds with tweezers, watering, filling more trays, planting seeds by tapping a bent note card delicately, watering, dozens of species from multiple vendors. Just seeds and seeds and more seeds. I should look into a vacuum seeder for next year. That concludes this week's Lap Notes. Bye.